नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय This Krishna consciousness movement is based on the eternal teachings of Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavan Sri Krishna begins his teaching to Arjuna by stating the hero swimya thade re komaram yoga nam jara tatha de antara praptya dhira stantra namokriti It is a simple principle that he speaks of. We see a young boy becomes a young man, a young man becomes an old man, and an old man becomes a dead man. But Bhagavan Krishna teaches us that we do not die. Bhagavan Krishna teaches us that we do not die. Before the body existed, we existed. and after the body dies we shall continue to exist if we are someone who are you they will identify maybe you will say well i am s kumara and uh, this is my father and mother i am a tamil i am born in sri lanka but krishna teaches us that although this is true it's only temporarily true and therefore it's not our real identity in a previous life i might have been born not even as a human maybe as a demigod in the heavenly world or as a dog in the street and in a future life i may be a demigod in heaven or a dog or a snake or a cat or a worm but i am eternal the body changes the young mother holds the baby in her lap and she thinks this is my son later she is old and her son is grown up and she still says my son but the son she when there was the baby on the lap and the son who is now 40 years old is complete the body is completely different so if she thinks that this son this person is the body for well, the body has completely changed the body changes at every moment and the mind changes at every moment so what is the principle by which a mother thinks that this is my son and 40 years later she still thinks this is my son when the mind and body have completely changed it is the soul that remains constant when someone dies a dear person dies we cry but why should we cry if we think that this person is the body the body is just a collection of chemicals if you put all the chemicals together the total value might be uh, you know maximum 5000 rupees body is mostly made of uh, water carbon nitrogen which has very little monetary value calcium is not it's not very valuable but if a dear person dies you can even if you get 5 crore of rupees you can't feel satisfied so bhagwan krishna begins his teaching by pointing out that the soul is eternal but the body is temporary therefore we should be more interested in the soul than the body due to maya we identify with this body this is the cause of all our problems therefore elsewhere lord krishna states that human life is meant for self realization that the asu durla bhavidam bhavsam bhavante manusham arthadam अनित्यम अपीह हीर चूर्णम्य चेतन भजगमृतयावनिश्चय सर्वशय खलु सार्वथा स्यात् लॉर्ड कृष्ण स्टेट्स 
that this human life is very rare. We travel in the course of time through 84 lakh species of birds. Sometimes you feel a little ant crawling on your skin. Well, I was also an ant previously. And a bird, and a tree, and a worm, and a fish, and a snake. But now we have human life. Human life is very valuable. It is more important than animal life, plant life, snake life, or any other life. Why is human life more valuable than animal? Because we can play cricket, because we can put on gold ornaments, because we can dress in fashionable clothes, because we can watch TV. None of these are the purpose of life. In human life, we have the intelligence to discriminate between what should be done and what should not be done. In human life, we can discriminate between reality and illusion. Therefore, we should take advantage of this opportunity. One who is dhira, one who is cool-headed, he can consider these points. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna mentions Sarvagun, Rajagun, Tamagun. In Tamaguna, one is completely dull-headed. Even though one has human intelligence, he's just foolish, completely. People who like to sleep a lot or take a lot of intoxication, they're in Tamagun. Or someone who just likes to sit and watch cartoons or on TV or play computer games. This is Tamagun. Another aspect of Tamagun is uh, meaningless violence. Then Rajogun is a little better, in which someone is very active, ambitious to fulfill material desires. Let me get ahead of others. Let me be better than others. Let me become very rich and powerful and famous. So in Rajogun and Tamagun, these are different phases of Maya. Sadhagun is the quality of goodness. This is better. In Sadhagun, that doesn't mean one is free from Maya, but one is considering how to get free. In Sadhagun, we consider Athato Brahma Jivyasa. Now I should inquire into the nature of spiritual reality. Who am I? Where have I come from? What is the purpose of life? Who is supreme? A person with sattvic intelligence considers, I want to be happy, but I don't find any happiness in material life. There must be happiness beyond material happiness. There must be spiritual happiness. So one should become dearer or steady intelligence in the mode of Bhagavad Instead of thinking, just what can I do for my body at this moment, we thinking of our eternal welfare. We should consider that life is very short. We will not live long. There is uh, one sadhu here with gray, gray hair and beard. Just a short time ago, he was a baby on his mother's lap. And the baby, in a short time, will have a long hair and beard. This Kamala Dala Jala Jivana Kala Bala. Life is like the drop of water on a lotus leaf which can fall down at any time. So an intelligent person should think that I have to die. Before I die, I should make my consciousness pure so that I do not have to be born again. Human life is the opportunity to get free from birth and death. Now, if we think, well, I want to enjoy myself. I want to, we can think, but I want to enjoy myself. I want to eat lots of ice cream and drink lots of Coca-Cola. I want to have disco dancing. I want to have many girlfriends. I want to 
go on a tour of the whole world. I want to see London, New York, Paris. But we should consider that we have got the op- in every life there is the opportunity to enjoy the senses. The dog is also enjoying his senses. When the dog lies in the shade, sleeping, he thinks I am very happy. When the donkey eats some grass, he thinks I am very happy. So human life is the opportunity to come to the platform of Brahma Sukh, spiritual happiness. Therefore, Rishabh Dev advises that Nayam Deyo Deha Bhajam Riloka Kashtam Karman Arate Hilipujam Ye Tapodhivyam Putraka Yena Satnam Tasmat Brahma Sokyam Tvanamta That one should not misuse human life. Even the pigs feel some happiness in the material sense enjoyment. So human beings should not be on the level of the pigs. We should undertake divine austerity so that we can attain to eternal spiritual happiness. So these are the basic teachings of the Krishna consciousness movement. It is not a sentimental religious movement. It is based on the... uh, eternal philosophy of Bhagavad Gita and the Shastra. It is not even what people consider as a kind of sectarian Hindu religion. When Krishna says, Dehino Sunyata Dehe, Kumara Nyovanam Jara, that the body changes from boyhood to youth and old age, it doesn't mean that only the Hindus go old. This is true of everybody. We may consider I am Hindu, Buddhist, Christian, Muslim, or whatever, but we are all eternal spirit souls, and we all have our eternal relationship with the Supreme Soul. Different people understand that Supreme Soul by different names, but the full understanding of the Supreme Being is expressed by the name Krishna. Krishna means all attractive. Generally, we think of God as all powerful. Well, that's true. But He's not only all powerful, He's also all beautiful, all auspicious. Satyam Shivam Sundaram. He is, he is all, all truth, all auspiciousness, and all beauty. So, Krishna Bhakti means the soul's natural, loving relationship with the Supreme Soul, who is Krishna, all attractive Krishna. So Krishna Bhakti is very sweet and very joyful. I think you can appreciate how Krishna consciousness is joyful. This religious process is based on singing and dancing. Now sometimes people sing and dance in a wedding ceremony. They do that here, I say. And some people, they get drunk and then they sing and dance. But the singing and dancing in Krishna Bhakti is not like the crazy dancing of a drunken person. It is the soul's natural propensity of love for Krishna. We sing when we are very happy. Dance when we are very happy. Krishna is always happy. Krishna is Ananda Vigraha. He is the very form of bliss. And we all have our eternal relationship with Krishna. So when we awaken our relationship with Krishna, then naturally we want to sing and dance. And what do we sing? We sing Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. When we sing the name of Krishna, then naturally we remember the qualities and pastimes of Krishna. And when we remember how sweet and kind and beautiful Krishna is, then naturally we become more and more joyful. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has recommended Harangama, 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 Eva Krivala, Kalona, Steva, 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 Dakti, Dakti. In Kali Yuga, we are not fit 
for performing difficult austerity. In Kali Yoga, we cannot perform elaborate religious ceremonies. So in Kali Yoga, we are given the direct process for awakening our blissful, loving relationship with Krishna by chanting His names. And it's practical, it works. In the modern age, people like to be very scientific. They want proof for everything. Well, the proof, no. the proof of Krishna consciousness is that it transforms people's lives in the best possible way. People who are formerly sinful are becoming saintly. People who formerly had no interest in anything religious are now mad with love of Krishna. We see that all over the world, people are giving up their bad habits, sinful habits, and taking to Krishna consciousness because they understand, they've got, they've, it's been imparted to them how wonderful this Krishna Bhakti is. So, we have come here to request you to also please take up this Krishna Bhakti. In many ways, it could be said that the people of this area are unfortunate and in much difficulty. Many people from this area might be thinking, well, if I could go to Switzerland or Canada or Australia, I'd be much better off than being in Bata, Bata Koala. But misfortune can be the seed of our greatest fortune. Because actually if one does go to the Western world, one tends to become bewildered by all the opportunities for sense enjoyment. But if we have nothing material to aspire for, then we can aspire for the spiritual. Maybe in this life we have to suffer materially. But if those difficulties prompt us to seek out my ultimate spiritual good, then those difficulties are welcome. If we consider, I have nothing material to gain, so let me try to find out Krishna, then that is our greatest fortune. Because even if we become as rich and famous as Bill Gates, or a big politician, or a great sportsman, at the end of life we have nothing. The greatest film star, the greatest cricket player, the greatest politician, at the end of life they have nothing. All our material achievements mean nothing. Simply according to our karmic reactions, we have to take another birth. But if we have developed Krishna Bhakti, then we don't take birth again. Lord Krishna states in Bhagavad Gita, Janma Kapya. Okay. Janma Kapya, you can say. So even if we are materially in a difficult situation, if we can cultivate Krishna Bhakti and understand Krishna is supreme, I am his servant. That is the complete success of our life. We will not take birth again. This morning one lady from Tirukoyal was asking me for Ashivadam for getting Mukti. But by the grace of Lord Krishna, received through Parampara, through Srila Prabhupada, we can give much more than Mukti. When we are suffering, then naturally we start to think of Mukti. But Bhakti, Krishna Bhakti, is much more than Mukti. Krishna Prem is far, to be situated in Krishna Prem is a much better situation than Mukti. This material world is full of fear and anxiety. Any intelligent person considering this should want to be free from this material world. But the, as I was explaining this morning, Mother Yashoda, she is feeling anxiety for Krishna. She is afraid that Krishna may become harmed. There is no question of Krishna ever coming to any harm. Krishna can protect 
everybody from any harm. But although he is powerful to the extent that we cannot imagine, he plays as if a helpless child to give praying to his devotee. So the anxiety that Mother Yashoda feels for Krishna, that is far more exalted than the sense of mukti that is aspired for by yogis. When Krishna goes barefoot in the forest, the gopis are feeling pain in their heart, they're feeling afraid that the thorns will prick his feet. The gopis feel distress, thinking that Krishna may suffer something. But that distress, that is the ultimate limit of praying. So Krishna Bhakti means to come to this platform of praying. That is far, far beyond the platform of material enjoyment. Even the platform of material love, that is also based on illusion. So beyond material love and hate, between beyond material sense enjoyment, beyond mukti is the platform of Krishna praying. And that can be attained by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. It is a very simple process. You do not have to become a sannyasi to chant Hare Krishna. Whatever you are doing, you can continue to do it, but add this bhakti to your life. If you are a school teacher, or a shopkeeper, or a housewife, or a student, you can continue doing what you are doing. But add to your life the practice of daily chanting the Maha Mantra, the names of Krishna. Make Krishna the goal of your life. In this way, everyone can attain the Supreme Perfection. Krishna is so kind. He has given us this easy process by which we can attain it. Of course, there is a great philosophy to be understood. For that purpose, we have also brought some books. It's not that everyone can become a great philosopher. Those who want to understand Krishna Bhakti seriously, they should study at least Bhagavad Gita Unmai Uravin. Everyone is reading the newspaper. So, instead of reading the newspaper, read the eternal news from the spiritual world that is Bhagavad Gita. That is our request to you. We have some books on display here. Does anyone have any questions, please? If you have any question, you could come up here and take the mic just at the front of the stage. Or you could write it down. You can also do that. Could you let them just ask from the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Did you say it in Tamil in the mic? Of course, there are so many doctors who are in Krishna consciousness. No abortions. Abortion is sin. You can be a doctor, you can be a teacher, you can be a shopkeeper. Don't be a butcher, that's also not good. Okay, don't go on too long, otherwise you'll lose the prayer. Anyone else says they want to write down? They can write down if they like also. And you can tell that afterwards I can meet people. Tell them afterwards I can meet people. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama If we want to follow sincerely, we should take guidance from devotees. We should chant the holy names of Krishna daily on beat. For all the other basic simple processes, that just like how to do puja at home and all those things, you can see that book I made called Bhakti Yoga. We have copies here. If you want to practice more seriously, please see us afterwards and we'll keep personal contact with you. This is what we are doing. We are giving you the path by which you can attain by which individual and within the whole society, peace can be attained. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna states, the path to attain peace. Anybody said that? 
Well, friendly speaking, these people are bold. Actual Bhagavan is Krishna. Anyone can say I'm Bhagavan and foolish people will be cheated by that. We have to understand from Shastra. Shastra states, Ishvara Parama Krishna Satyananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam. There are various avatars of Vishnu. They are mentioned in Shastra. They are, they are described in Shastra. So Kalki avatar is also described in Shastra. But uh, he will come in another 4 lakh 27,000 years. It's not, you see, this present so called Kalki avatar, he was an uh, insurance officer in Chennai, and then all of a sudden he declared himself Bhagavan. So this is not mentioned in Shastra. That is the test. And also, a bona fide teacher should teach their disciples the proper path. We were talking about sattva gun. Actually, you cannot become properly spiritually advanced unless we give up all bad habits. So if people are eating meat or even drinking tea and coffee and smoking, then you can't make proper spiritual advancement. So if these people don't teach their followers to give up bad habits, then they're not proper teachers. If we just tell people, you just follow me and worship me, we can get millions of followers. But if we tell people the real thing, that you have to become purified, you have to lead a pure life, you have to give up all bad habits, not many people will come. But we don't want to cheat people. We want to give people the real thing. We want to give people the truth. It's very, if you want to cheat people, it's very easy. People like to be cheated. If you tell people you do whatever you like and you be spiritual, people like that. But if we tell people that to become spiritually advanced, you have to follow certain principles, not many people will like that. So we are interested to give the true path according to Shastra. We are not interested to cheat people to get many cheap followers. We don't want any followers. I don't want anyone to come and worship me, Bhakti Vikas Swami is Bhagavan. I am only interested in making disciples, if they will recognize that Krishna is Bhagavan, they are the servant of Krishna, and understand that I am also a servant of Krishna. So a real teacher presents, he doesn't say, I am God, he says, I am a servant of God. So it's very easy to recognize who is bona fide and who is bogus. Anyone who says, I am God, except the actual Bhagavan, you should kick them in the face. They are simply cheaters. They will go to the darkest hell and their followers will go with them. Oh, how it came in the form of the literature, it was later written down by Vyasa. Bhagavad Gita was spoken by Krishna to Arjuna. We find the first verse of Bhagavad Gita is Dhritarashtra Uvacha, Dhritarashtra speak. So that was spoken by Sanjay to Dhritarashtra and later recorded in Mahabharata by Bhagavan Vedas. It is often, it is generally published as a separate book because of its importance. Mahabharata is a vast work. Bhagavad Gita is only 700 verses. But those 700 verses, they are the essence of Mahabharata and more important than all the rest of the Mahabharata. So therefore it is published as a separate book. You read it in Tamil already? Of course. There is no bar to marriage. Bhagavad Gita was spoken to Arjuna who was a Krihasta. Young men who want to dedicate their life fully to preaching, they can be brahmacharis. Family life, there are many distractions, but if one is serious and sincere, then in family life, one can also be a perfect devotee of Krishna. So if you like to be married in Krishna consciousness, be married, but be an ideal Krihasta. You can, but you won't get any good result from it. It's like that it's... You can do so and you might feel some sentimental pleasure from that, but you won't get any spiritual benefit. You should understand what is the real thing and what is simply imitation. It cannot save you from birth and death. She herself is subject to birth and death. I heard that uh, she was in her ashram when the tsunami came and she was also running away. 
She was in her ashram when the tsunami came. She was also running away. She's under the control of the material energy. She is not, she is not the controller of the material energy. If we actually understand Bhagavad Gita as it is, then these questions will not arise. Everything will become clear. It's just like someone who doesn't know, he may think that a real apple and a plastic apple is the same. Someone who doesn't know, who's not educated, they may think that a real apple and a plastic apple is the same. But you cannot get any benefit from eating a plastic apple. Well, a detailed explanation is given here in Bhagavad Gita. In, Lord, in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes there are three kinds of faith in Sattva Gun, Raja Gun, Tamagun. Three kinds of knowledge in Sattva Gun, Raja Gun, Tamagun. Three kinds of food in Sattva Gun, Raja Gun, Tamagun. Who likes to eat food with lots of chilies? I think that's very popular here. That's also in Raja Gun. But ultimately Krishna says, we have to go beyond these three modes to come to the platform of bhakti. Or actually bhakti takes us beyond the three modes. There's no need.